Hi guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, it's going to be more of a chill video, just kind of sitting and chatting. I'm going to be doing the glow up in beauty tag. Now this tag was started by my friend Kelsey Brianna J and I was so excited to do it. I would definitely recommend you check hers out. Hers was so funny and this tag really just brings out the nostalgia. I'm so excited to do this because of all of the fun things that were brought back up into my memory because of this. Uh, just from watching Kelsey's video, oh my gosh, it brought back so much memories. It also kind of allows me to share a little bit about my makeup journey with you guys and it's just such a fun tag. So if you want to do it, definitely go ahead and do it or comment down below your answers to these questions because this one is such a fun one that I had to do it. Let's get into it. <laughs> So Kelsey's video on this is a lot funnier than mine because she's been through it with the experiences. I feel like I haven't really had any crazy makeup experiences because my mom wouldn't let me leave the house growing up if I looked crazy. I've always worn more neutral colors out and I would play with the colorful colors at home, which that's still kind of how it is. But I don't really have any crazy makeup experiences walking out of the house because my mom would not let that happen. So anyways, let's get into the first question. What is the worst beauty advice you've ever gotten? Growing up when I first started getting into makeup, my mom would take me to makeup counters. The first time I ever bought makeup, it was from Sean Takai and Bobbi Brown. I did not stand a chance when it came to loving luxury makeup, oh my gosh. And at that time, like, they had pretty good makeup advice, so I always felt like I was getting good makeup advice, uh, but the bad makeup advice would come from YouTube. So I started watching YouTube when I was, like, 11 or 12. I was really young. YouTube was in the young stages. I mean, I was watching Encore Makeup, uh, which I don't even think his channel exists anymore. He definitely doesn't make beauty videos anymore. Fafinet X3 was my favorite. Like, this is, like, back before OG YouTubers like these are like back 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 in the day so I've been into YouTube makeup videos since the dinosaur age basically one though that I feel like was horrible is to go a few shades lighter with your concealer to brighten up your face first of all that really doesn't get rid of your darkness under the eyes it kind of almost emphasizes it because if it's too white, you can still see the blue peeking through and it's just not flattering. And I just feel like you look crazy if you use concealer that's too light. I definitely had that advice given to me and let's be honest here, some people still do it. And for me, it's just, it's not my style. I really don't like concealer that is far off from my foundation, to be honest. It just... If you go too light, it looks weird. And honestly, if you don't put a corrector underneath, it, it just really emphasizes the deepness. That was a lot of advice that was given and honestly, it's just not good advice in my opinion. Some beauty advice that's been horrible that I've been given is about color theory and color correcting. They would say if you have redness, like put green on top. And when I was younger, I would like my cheeks were red and I was like, oh, I need to put green everywhere. Do you know how sick you look if you put actual like green all over your cheeks and then put a foundation on top? Like, I think that was more so me misinterpreting it, but I just feel like color correcting is not taught in the correct way. People are going too crazy with the color correcting shades that they're using that it literally shows through your foundation. Color correcting in theory, yes, it makes sense, especially when you come from an artist side. However, makeup artistry foundation is not full pigment. It's not going to cover the green cream you have over your face or the orange that you have under the eye. You have to balance everything a little bit and just kind of keep that in mind. But anyways, that's just some horrible advice I've been given. Okay, so this next thing is kind of irrelevant. I don't know why I told this story, but enjoy. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to offend a few people when I say this, but like, 
going to MAC to get your makeup done, especially when you're really young. I think nowadays MAC is a little bit different. I don't know. I haven't gotten my makeup done at MAC for a while. But back in the day, MAC had this reputation of, it was just, it was very, very popular. That's where you went to get your makeup done. You went to MAC. I went and got my makeup done at MAC and it was horrible. I just feel like as a young girl, I should not have gone to MAC to get my makeup done because they're all about the artistry and all of that. And this artist gave a 12 or 13 year old, however old I was, a deep plum purple smoky eye. Now this was more so back in the day, but I feel like telling me to go get my makeup done at MAC, like that was where I was going to get the best makeup application. Like what? And I don't know why everybody recommended it because I feel like everybody has at least one very bad MAC experience. Question number two, what is the worst beauty advice you've ever given? I've always wanted to have a beauty channel uh, on YouTube ever since I was a little girl, blah, blah, blah. I've just always loved giving advice on beauty because I just always felt like I knew a lot about it. Who do I think I am, honestly? <laughs> And I remember when I was younger, nude lips were a thing and I recommended that you just put concealer or foundation all over your lips and then a little bit of a pink gloss on top. Hold up, hold up, y'all. I just got up out of bed at 7 a.m. Um, I'm going to take my own advice. Concealer. And a pink gloss. This is Fenty. Fenty, we weren't hip to Fenty back in the day. We were still listening to Ponda Replay. <laughs> Little did we know she was going to come out with this. Now, I recommended that because I was so young, I couldn't really buy makeup. So I would just steal my mom's foundation and put it all over my lips because nude lips are so popular. I'd be like, wow, look at this nude lip. <laughs> Now, this was also at the time that, like, those really white concealer lips were in. So, that's why I was like, well, literally, let's just put concealer on my lips. So, yes, I told my friends to do that if they wanted to have a nude lip. Some other advice that I've given is that liquid lipsticks are amazing. I still use them because they, they do give you full pigmentation and you have a lot of control about where the product goes and it just really defines the lip. But they are so drying and they are crusty and you have to kind of have beautiful lips to be able to pull off liquid lipsticks. So I always used to recommend liquid lipsticks because I thought they were the best thing in the world. But update, they're not. And the last beauty advice I've given is that lip liner and blush are useless. I am disgusted with myself for ever saying that. If you watch my channel now, you know that blush is one of my favorite makeup products ever. I think it makes the biggest difference in your face. It just looks so good. Yeah, I used to tell people that blush was dumb. I was dumb. Also, lip liner, for the longest time, I never understood how great lip liner was. I think I was just, I don't know. I just didn't use lip liner. Now I use it all the time and it transforms lipsticks. Like I have a really dark lip liner on right now with a really light lipstick, but for some reason back in the day, I was like lip liner's dumb. So anyways, I'm disgusted with myself. Let's move on. What beauty products did you struggle with the most or what is your worst experience with a product? I specifically have this memory of eyelashes and I'm sure everybody's first time putting on fake eyelashes. It's really difficult. The first thing that I purchased was individual lashes and I just remember sitting on my bathroom sink for a couple hours trying to stick those things on my eyes and they were like pointing in opposite directions and I wasn't waiting for the glue to get tacky before I was just putting it on really wet and I didn't understand why it was sticking and I would like glue my eyelashes together and and then after that experience I never tried false lashes again until years later and then I realized it's not hard at all to put fake eyelashes on that experience was a hot mess I also have <laughs> this memory of, I was really into Urban Decay. This was like back in the day. It was like old school Urban Decay and their 24 seven glide on eye pencils were super popular. And I was in middle school and I got my mom to buy me this electric blue glide on eye pencil. And it was in the shade electric. I still remember back in the day in middle school, it was popular to just have eyeliner on your bottom, waterline or lash line. And I put that blue liner 
liner on my lower lash line. I just remember after PE looking in the mirror of the bathroom and the blue eyeliner had melted like down my face. I looked in the mirror and I was like, oh, I don't know how to fix this. And <laughs> it's actually become a full circle story because in that locker room, the school I work at now, I am a PE teacher and I don't work in the same building that I went to middle school in, but it's the exact same construction and layout. So the locker room is literally the exact same. And so the first day that I started working, I was in the locker room, I had that flashback. I hadn't thought of it until that moment. It was just like a full circle moment. And now every time I'm in the locker room <laughs> and I see the exact mirror that I was standing at, I just think of that story because I remember being horrified. What beauty product did you used to use a lot back in the day but would never use now? This one I struggled with just because I've used all types of products and I feel like I can make a lot of different products work and honestly I don't really remember the products that I was using back in the day. Kelsey Brianna J, she said the NYX Jumbo Eye Pencils and yes I was crazy for those too and yes those did crease horribly. I don't want to talk about it too much because honestly I didn't even come up with that and I couldn't really come up with anything but any trendy product basically I used so anything that was crappy I probably agree with you. The next question number five what makeup techniques did you struggle with the most when learning how to do makeup? So this was my first time ever looking up how to do makeup on YouTube. This is what started this. Okay, I had gotten a really cheap Ulta makeup kit for Christmas and there was a black liner and I was influenced by all of my classmates because it was very popular to line your eyes with black and like nothing else, no mascara, foundation, none of that. And I wanted to learn how to line my eyes on the bottom. So the first thing that I ever searched on YouTube was how to put eyeliner on your waterline and makeup geeks video showed up, Marlena's. and. That's what started all of this and that's why I'm here now. I struggled with that because I was scared to put eyeliner like in my eye. I'd never experimented with makeup before, never had contacts, glasses, any of that. So the thought of putting this foreign object in my eye scared me. I spent hours online trying to learn how to put eyeliner on my waterline. Number six, what makeup technique do you struggle with currently and want to improve? There's so many techniques that I would love to improve on, especially when it comes to application on other people. As far as application for myself, I would love to perfect cut creases. I can do a fairly decent job with cut creases, but you know, people have those like quadruple cut creases, graphic liner, all of that crazy stuff. I would love to learn that just because I want to say that I can do it, but I, I can't do it. I'm not like an actual artist. I can't draw. I have very horrible handwriting. I'm just, I, I blend things. That's why I like to do blended looks because I'm not talented with all of that stuff. So I would love to learn more about cut creases and also skincare education, learning about the ingredients and really what goes into the skin. I don't have the patience to learn it and that's why I haven't learned it yet. I just know deep down I'm not that interested. I would just like to know it without having to go through the work of knowing it and learning it. I want to improve on that education. And as far as clientele and doing other people's makeup, I want to work on skincare and just skin complexion in general, color matching, color theory and all of that. I think I do a pretty decent job, but I always feel like there's so much more room for improvement in that area as far as my artistry goes. And number seven, what is a a beauty product that you never thought you'd buy but now own. Anything luxury. I remember, you know, growing up, I didn't have a lot of money of my own. Obviously, I didn't work. I was a broke college student. So Pat McGrath, I remember looking at those palettes and going, who would spend money on that? Now, I own everything she has. Uh, Natasha Denona, of course, was also in that. I was like, I would never spend $130 on an eyeshadow palette. And this one is a recent one, Tom Ford Quads. Even when I was buying Pat McGrath and Natasha Denona, I was like, well, I would never get into Tom Ford or Charlotte Tilbury. 
So basically, I lost all of my self-control and common sense. Um, moving on. <laughs> what beauty trends do you regret following? And for me, I would say definitely the over-contouring and highlighting, you know, Kim KW. She really made that popular, and honestly, I just wasted time doing it and focusing on that because in my makeup routine, it's really just not necessary, and it's just an added step that I didn't need to do, and if you don't do it right, you look dirty or you look like you're wearing the wrong color on your face, and I just wish I didn't do that because it looked gross. Also, like block brows, like using the pomade. I could still use pomades and I'll use it occasionally, but my brows would be thick and I'd be putting on a whole painted down layer of brow pomade because that's what I thought you were supposed to do because Instagram brows were crazy back in the day. But by the way, I can't really get into the feathery brows. You know how that's like the Instagram trend? I just, maybe because my eyebrow hairs are too thin and I'm jealous, but I feel like if I were to do that, I'd, I'd feel too messy. I can't do the, the feather brows. Okay, number nine. If you had to restart your beauty collection, what are some things that you would do differently? I love my beauty collection that I have now because I just have a lot of makeup and being surrounded by makeup is me and my happy place. It's what makes me happy. But if I had to restart, I would say to kind of stick to favorites and things that are worth purchasing because a lot of times if it's on sale, I would buy it, but I really didn't want it. I just wanted it because it was on sale. So in a world where I'm not doing YouTube, I just need to stop picking up things I don't want just to have them and really only focus on products that actually make me happy that I enjoy having. Like I still would buy the luxury products that I have because they make me happy, but there's a lot of times where I'll purchase things that are on sale or that I just happen to walk by and pick it up because I want to purchase something and if I was restarting my collection I would probably not do that it would save me a lot of money number 10 what is the worst makeup look that you've ever done so I don't know how I managed to pull this picture up but I did and I'm horrified that I thought this was good but this was back in the day a few years ago when I was first practicing cut creases and I thought this looked good oh how far we've come number 11 what is the best makeup look you've ever done now I don't do anything super crazy or super artistic a lot of times my channel is more product based rather than the actual makeup look some of the makeup looks that I've really loved I did this colorful look with the Viseart Soleil palette that look was relatively easy to do but I just loved the gradient of colors in that and and I don't know it was just a really pretty look I really liked that one and also I did a look almost recently with the Jeffree Star Jawbreaker palette again playing with colors I really liked the gradient and I just thought that look was very different than some other looks I'd done in the past I just really liked it that's the only explanation I can get and then another look I know it only asked for one but I can't do that is a look that I made using the Morphe Bling Boss palette and this was from a collaboration with Jack Hill and it was this just stunning purple halo eye and I think what made the look was I wore false lower lashes just the whole vibe of the photos I took that day and the way that it was capturing on camera I was obsessed with that look and I still am okay so number 12 what beauty advice would you give a beauty lover makeup artist or beauty influencer and I think what I said and this is as far as application goes and being a makeup lover not necessarily a makeup artist is that less is more not to be cliche or anything but for real and what I mean by that is when we watch these tutorials and videos on YouTube, people cake it on. But honestly, it's just not necessary. You don't need to have perfectly clear skin. People don't care. If you just even it out a little bit, it looks good. And I am guilty of this sometimes too, but I always do feel pretty when I have like a lighter coverage on. And also, your skin doesn't break out as much. So I would say don't cake it on for the sake of your natural 
about skin. I wear powder foundation most days and my skin has honestly never been better. So take care of your skin so you don't have to wear so much makeup and it just, and also your skin will thank you. Buy a ring light. Even if you're not doing videos, there's something fun about doing your makeup in front of a ring light. You really just can't get better lighting than that, in my opinion. And having good lighting really inspires me to be more creative and puts me more in the mindset of this is makeup time, time to get work done. Buy the items that make you happy. Me being a more luxury-based channel, sometimes I do get those people that are appalled at how much money I spend on my products. Buying a Pat McGrath palette makes you happy and you have the means to do it, do it, okay? Likewise, I like buying Morphe palettes as well. So as much as I love my luxury products, I love the giant Morphe palettes and I can't help it. And I buy those as well and they make me happy. I like to look at them, I like to swatch them and cuddle them. It makes me happy. So whether or not you're into luxury beauty or you like Morphe palettes, buy what makes you happy. It makes the experience of putting on makeup more fun and therapeutic. Thank you, Kelsey Brianna J for tagging me to do this video. It was really fun to take a step into my past. If you haven't checked out her her video definitely go do it hers was really funny i feel like mine wasn't and i'm sorry <laughs> let me know down below some of your answers to these questions if you have a channel and you make videos go ahead and make this tag as well it's so fun to just take a step back and look at how far you've come if you've made it this far here are a few photos of me growing up experimenting with makeup it's hard to see in those pictures but in them i was wearing like purple eyeshadows glitter liner expressing myself through makeup i was very young in these photos so anyways Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you aren't subscribed to my channel yet, I do hope you take the time to do so. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys, have a good one.